Hello everyone, welcome back to Investing Sucks. My name is Eric and thank you so much for tuning in. So I just wanted to make a quick video saying thank you to everyone. The channel has now surpassed 500 subscribers. So thank you so much to everyone for all the support the channel's received, all the likes, comments, subscribers. I greatly appreciate all of it. Now as a way of showing my gratitude, I wanted to release a Excel stock valuation template slash spreadsheet that I created to release to all my subscribers. So this is an Excel sheet that talks about everything that I cover in this channel. It has all the different valuations methods I use, the IRR calculator, the stock entry point calculator, uh, discounted cash flow model as well. It has all these great valuation tools and I wanted to release you guys, release it to you guys completely free of charge for you guys to use on your own when you're doing your own personal research. Another reason why I wanted to release this to you guys was to get your guys' feedback on actually using it and whether or not you notice that there's any bugs or issues with the spreadsheet or if there's additional features that you would like me to add to the spreadsheet which I could then release again later in the future. I'm actually potentially thinking of creating a website in the future that has a lot of stock valuation and research tools available for different types of investors out there and this spreadsheet is really the precursor to that. So any feedback that you guys could give whether it's something you liked about it, you don't like about it, a feature you want to add, some type of bug, just please send it to my email. Don't uh, comment it in the uh, comment section of this video because the YouTube comments algorithm hasn't really been working that well recently. I've gotten a lot of comments from people, perfectly legitimate comments, but the YouTube out comments algorithm just gets rid of them for whatever reason so I can't see them or respond to them so if you want to make sure that you get a response from me please just send it to my email it's just investing sucks at gmail.com so in order to access this spreadsheet just head to the description of this video and you'll see a link to a Google Sheets file so access that Google Sheets file and then from there you can download that into an Excel file so what I want to do in this video is just give a quick demo of the spreadsheet and the different valuation methods that I've put in the spreadsheet so far so we'll pick two companies using two different valuation methods and we'll show, I'll show you how easy it is to analyze this company where you basically just put in a few basic assumptions and the spreadsheet will spit out everything you need to know about what the company's shares will be worth given those assumptions five years in the future, 10 years in the future, whatever. Okay, so here's one tab of the spreadsheet and you can see down here there's two tabs. So one is EV EBITDA, so this is the EV EBITDA multiple of earnings approach to valuing a company. And then we also have the free cash flow one. So we're gonna start with the EV EBITDA uh, version here. So basically what you do is you have in pink here, you just enter your assumptions. So all these numbers here you enter and then in yellow over here, it's going to spit out exactly what type of valuation numbers those assumptions will lead to. So let's say the company we want to look at is Drone Delivery, Drone Delivery Canada. So enter their name and the company name there. Currency will just say it's in Canadian dollars and then the dollar amount. So the dollar amount is the number of currency units that you want to appear throughout your valuation. So as you can see here, it says all numbers in thousands of Canadian dollars except per share data. So that's the company info tab there and then we just go down and then in the valuation model part here, or valuation model info part there, you just enter how many years of analysis you want to do. So say we want to do five years, you just enter five. And then the most recent year end, so the most recent completed year financial data. So for them it'd be 2020 because their year end was uh, December 31st, 2020. And we go down here and you can enter certain revenue assumptions. So their revenue it was about 265 million. So since we're working in uh, thousands here, we'd enter 265,000. And then let's say we think that their revenue is gonna grow at 35% per year for the five years of analysis that we wanna do. So we enter 35 there. And then the enterprise value assumptions, let's say we'll assume a 12% EBITDA margin. So at the end of our analysis, which would be 2025, since we're going 2020 to 2025, it'd be 12%. And then let's say we take a 20 uh, EBITDA multiple there. So in 2025, they're selling it 20 times EBITDA as a enterprise value to EBITDA. And then total debt, let's say they have 100 million in total debt. So enter that cash, let's say they have 60 million in cash. So we enter that. Current shares outstanding, so current shares outstanding is about 185 million. So we enter that. And let's say we think this is going to grow at 7%, so they're going to issue 7% more shares every year. And the current share price is about $1.30. So once you've done that, you've entered in all your assumptions. We just go over here and it generates the analysis for you. So we can see here, there's your revenue, there's your projected EBITDA, and then it calculates enterprise value by applying that 
enterprise value multiple to the EBITDA in 2025, which is the end of our analysis. It does all the calculations for you to get the estimated market cap, which is right here, divides that by the estimated shares outstanding, and then it will get a estimated price per share in 2025, and then gives you the price per share today and tells you what your average annual return will be. By the way, this isn't what I actually think of this company. This is just what I'm putting in for the sake of the demonstration. And then down here, there's the entry point calculator. So based on all those assumptions, we'd expect a average annual return of about 53%, which is obviously quite good. And then over here, it says the entry price. So say if you want a desired annual return of 10%, 15, all the way up to 50, it tells you exactly what price per share you'd want to enter the stock at in order to get that desired return. And then say we want to change that. We want to change our assumptions. We just go over here to the assumptions part. Let's say instead I want to do seven years. I enter seven, and then it automatically recalculates everything. So everything over here in the yellow gets updated. But then we say, you know, I think 35% annual revenue growth is a bit much. I'm gonna go 20%, so we enter that. And once again, it just automatically calculates everything over here. So that's the EV EBITDA part of it. Okay, so now I've gone to the other tab and we're on the free cash flow tab down here. So what this does is it does the free cash flow to equity method that you see me often use in this channel. It also has the IRR calculator and it also does a discounted cash flow analysis because I know a lot of people like to use that as well. So let's say the company we want to take a look at is Facebook. So we'd enter Facebook in the company name. Now their currency would be in USD. So we'd enter USD. And then the dollar amount, we're gonna deal with millions here. So all the numbers we enter will be in millions. So we can see over here, it populates everything. We've got the name of the company, all numbers in millions of USD. We go down here to valuation model info. So say we want to do a seven year analysis, enter seven. Most recent year end, once again, is 2020. Now the revenue of their most recent quarter was 86 billion. So we'd enter it like that since we're dealing with millions here. And let's say we think their revenue is going to grow at 20% a year for the next seven years. Again, this isn't what I actually think of this company, but just for the sake of demonstrating this. Now their free cash flow to equity as a percentage of revenue. You guys have probably seen me talk about this a lot on my channel. Now for Facebook, let's say going forward, it's going to be 27%. Now their shares outstanding, they have about 2.5 billion in shares outstanding, so we'd enter that. Again, because we're dealing with millions here. And we think they're going to buy back 1% of their shares uh, about every year for the next seven years. So we enter negative 1% there. Now their free cash flow yield in 2027. So it says 2027 there because that's the end of our analysis. If we're only doing five years, it would say 2025 here. But let's say we think it'll be 5%. So if it, we have a free cash flow to equity yield of 5% in 2027, that implies a multiple of 20. So that's useful in calculating terminal value for when we do the discounted cash flow. And then you're gonna enter the current share price, which is about 360 US dollars. And then down here, you'd wanna enter, this is for the discounted cash flow, you'd wanna enter your required rate of return. So say, this is what you would discount the future cash flows at. So say, I want at least a 15% return. I'm not willing to consider this investment unless it gives me at least a 15% return. And in addition to that, I want a 20% margin of safety, which means once I discount those future free cash flows, back to their present value at a rate of 15%, I want the stock price to be 20% below that calculated intrinsic value. So let me go over here to the yellow part. So if we go up here to the top, I'll start at the top. So we can see it's got the years, so all the way to 2027, the estimated revenue, the free cash flow to equity based on that revenue, the shares outstanding, which is going down at 1%, and then the free cash flow to equity per share. And then here it calculates IRR for you as well. So all this gets updated automatically. You got the IRR calculator. It gives you that future stream of cash flows as well as the terminal value per share. And then it calculates your IRR. So because we have a 13% IRR based on these assumptions we did, but our discount rate, which is used in the discounted cash flow analysis down here was 15%, which means like we would want at least a 15% IRR, we're gonna get negative numbers here, which basically means that our calculated intrinsic value per share using this discounted cash flow model is 351 and the current stock price was around 360 as of me recording this video. And we also wanted our desired margin of safety, which means if we wanted that, we would have to purchase it around $281 a share. So it tells you everything you need to know. I wanted to include this discounted cash flow part here because I know a lot of people like to use that 
And again, let's say instead of that, we want to do a 10 year analysis. We just go over to the assumptions here. And the only thing you change is you just enter 10 there and then everything automatically gets populated. So it assumes 10 more years with all the other same assumptions. So same revenue growth, same free cash flow to equity as a percentage of revenue, uh, share buyback rate and all that stuff. So all gets automa updated automatically. We can see all the revenue. So we're basically saying in 2030, Facebook's revenue will be 532 million. Free cash flow will be this and their shares and then the free cash flow to equity per share. And then it does the IRR calculator, which you always see me include this in the videos. And from this, we can see it actually gets an IRR of above 15. So then if we go down here, we can see the intrinsic value per share is now higher than what the current stock price is, but the desired margin of safety that we want of 20% isn't quite there yet. But let's say, you know, 20% is a bit much. I only want a 10% margin of safety. Then we can see this becomes green, which means uh, we can buy the stock at its current price and we do it. We'd basically achieve our required rate of return and our desired margin of safety. So again, I hope you guys will find this spreadsheet super useful. I personally will be using it for all the videos that I make going forward. And again, if there's a feature you want me to add to it, or you notice there's something that's not really working with it, like there's some type of bug or issue with it, just please send me an email and I will get back to you. Um, but anyways, guys, that pretty much does it for this video. Just wanted to give you a quick demonstration how this works. I should be coming out with a new video later this week, so stay tuned for that. Uh, and yeah, that pretty much does it. So thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.